tiny art space for my tiny art if you want to know one of the reasons why I paint so small is because I really don't have much room to paint <laughs> the tiny art studio and the first things first I think is to actually tidy this create some space and then we're going to be learning how to paint one of these tiny landscapes so super easy and not as difficult as you think just a few little techniques and I think we're going to start with I think we'll start with a little mountain this week and uh, yeah so let's begin so I, so I think because this is the first um, sort of kind of like painting acrylic tutorial I would very quickly just talk to you about some of the materials that I use and I use quite inexpensive uh, acrylics I like to use the Pebeo studio acrylics so one of the things to look out for when working with acrylics is look for high viscosity it's absolutely key to the type of acrylic painting that I do. Um, it just creates a much thicker paint, it's less thin and it just works a little bit more like oils. So it's really good for the dry brush technique. So I highly recommend not sponsored these acrylic paints. Let me so just grab that. my little unicorn. <laughs> um, I use a mixture of brushes, but primarily I use these graduate brushes um, by Dela and Rowney. And I like to use, this is actually a round brush, but I like to use the flat brush. So let's use the one I use most as you can tell because it's dirtier so the graduate brushes um, by Dela and Rowney and I highly recommend these and these are quite inexpensive uh, brushes and I like to use the flat brushes um, this one's at a bit of an angle so um, yeah but anyway let's crack on and show you how to paint a really super easy mountain in just two steps and you'll be painting little masterpieces in no time hopefully. So one of the other um, things worth mentioning is I don't really use paint palettes I tend to just use baking paper from the kitchen and this is um, really useful um, instead of just flushing cleaning your paint palettes and flushing plastic down the sink um, you can just um, I, I like to put it back in the tube as much as possible if there's any leftover but you can just scroll it up and throw it away so it's a little bit better slightly better for the environment so I'm just going to be using some mixed media canvas paper and this happens to be 250 GSM and is suitable for watercolor and acrylic pastels pen and ink absolutely everything it's really nice to work with so I've got a little piece here and we're just going to tape off some edges for our little mountain painting so let's get some tape now this is just normal masking tape it's nothing fancy it's quite a thin one but I don't tend to use this that often so we're just going to tape off a little area for our mountain we're going to be using just four colors for this little mountain scene um, for the sky we're going to be using some cerulean blue so we're going to grab a little bit of cerulean blue it's quite a small painting so don't need too much obviously we're going to need some white always go for a titanium white let's get some of that and we're also mainly for the mountain we're going to be using a little bit of burnt umber or just a brown you can use black as well but i i don't know why but i always tend to avoid black as much as possible in my paintings and uh, also some Payne's Grey, which is pretty much my go-to colour of all time. If you're going to invest in one colour, get some Payne's Grey. It's just so great for all types of different landscapes. So we're going to get some Payne's Grey as well. So we're just going to be working with these four main colours. Okay, so let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mix up a little bit of the white and the cerulean blue. Not too much blue, so mainly primarily the white. I wonder if I can tape this to here so you can actually see my paint process. Okay, that's better. So we got some white cerulean blue. And we're going to be really free with this, with the sky. So we're just going to... No water, so completely dry brush. Just pure paint. Can add a little bit more white. You want a little bit more white at the bottom than you do at the top and you can just move your brush around to create some clouds okay so don't be afraid to play with the paint be messy add a little bit more white to the bottom like that and again add a little bit at the top maybe hint at some clouds like so and we might add just a little bit darker 
blue just in between our sort of pretend clouds nearer the top so we don't want it too blue at the bottom and there we go we have a really simple sky let's see if i can bring that closer to the camera so a really simple sky nothing special nothing fancy and now we're going to work on our mountain so this will be the only time i use water is just purely cleaning my brush to change color but other than that i do not use any water for mixing and i completely dry my brush in between okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some white with some of the the darker blue which was the Payne's gray so it's more blue than gray never understood why it's called Payne's gray it's actually blue <laughs> and we're going to mix up a lighter version of the Payne's gray and this is what we're going to use for shaping out our mountains so just make some typical cliche mountain shapes Get some more paint if you really struggle with the dry brush technique, you can use a little bit of water, but I really recommend not adding any water. So we're going to have a mountain here, and we're going to bring that down and fill in the foreground as well. I feel like I'm painting faster. Okay, don't worry about if your mountains aren't perfect because we're going to tidy that up after okay so we've got our basic mountain shape and what we want to do now is just make sure we have the shape that we want Okay, that's pretty good. And now clean the brush. So to bring your mountain alive, we need to work out which direction our light is coming in. So I'm going to imagine the sunlight is hitting the mountains in this direction. So what we want to do is add some snow to the top of our mountains. And we're just going to use pure titanium white. Now sometimes you can add a tiny bit of yellow. But I find just the pure white's okay. It's quite a cold mountain. And it's going to be quite generous with the just the white and we're going to start adding some snow but this is why a good flat brush is great for this to the left side of the mountain hitting the top of that mountain this is where we can work out the shape and the more bright your more pure your titanium white is the more realistic that sunlight will look we can add it down here the sun could be hitting some snow down here and again, don't be too scared to just work any lines and marks. Okay. Okay, and we have the sunlight hitting our mountain like that. And I'll show you a close-up at the end. Okay, now we clean our brush. And we're going to have some fun now with the brown. So the burnt umber. I'm going to get some burnt umber. I'm just going to use pure burnt umber I might add just a little bit of the Payne's grey to make it a little bit colder it's not too warm and this is where we're going to add sort of bits of the rock so I'm going to do it further down because we're going to have more snow at the top and we can just add some like little marks little dots and dashes to Give the impression of some rocks, bits of mountain that's showing through. You can imagine it coming down this side as well. Sometimes the point of the brush is better. And we're going to add, we're going to keep these more brown marks to on the closer part of the mountain. And then we'll do a few little dots along the top. There'll be less rock showing. 
Looking at the top, so you've got more snow. Okay, and clean your brush. You see our mountain coming together. And now we're going to go in for more of the Payne's Grey, a darker blue, maybe a hint of the brown. And we're going to use this for the more distant parts. And go over some of those other bits. Especially this mountain in the background here. And add a little bit of white to lighten the blue. So we just have some marks here. That's pretty much it. Your mountain is almost finished, so I'm going to work on a little bit more of that lightening of the Payne's Grey. And just adding some more shaded parts of the mountain. Keeping this side a little bit more in the sunlight. And there we go. That's pretty much it. It's finished. So you can go over any of the other marks if you're not happy. Um, for example, if you want to just get more the pure white, really, really bright white, and just go over any marks. Just uh, really show that sunlight hitting the mountain maybe down here like so and there is our finished little mountain as easy as that and i really hope you'll give it a try last thing to do obviously is to remove the tape so let's try and remove our tape now a lot of people experience ripping of the paper with this tape this tape uh, masking tape is not anything special, it's just I think the paper really helps with the lack of ripping, just move it slowly. But you can also use a hairdryer to heat the tape and that melts the glue slightly and can also prevent ripping. You see it's ripped slightly there. But yeah, you can use any masking tape. I did buy this from an art shop, this masking tape, but I also use masking tape from a DIY store, so it works just as well. In fact, sometimes it works better. And of course we get the nice clean edges which of course you can or not do it's entirely up to you and there we go there is our little mountain scene let's bring that out show you closely our little mountain scene just using four colors really simple techniques just work out where your light is coming from be free with the brush don't be afraid to make some marks and hopefully you'll give it a try. And that is week one of our little mountain scene. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I hope you'll give it a try. Master, uh, master some dry brush acrylic techniques. And join me, subscribe, and I shall show you how to make all these other little landscapes using very simple techniques as well. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. Um, all as easy as the mountain. So, yep, yeah, I will see you soon with some more arty fun. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.